your mailbox. A lot of the underneath the uh, mobile homes are all flooded out. It's you can't get through the roads back there. I've been here three years. Never seen it this bad. Another summer soaker out there today. Heavy thunderstorms causing flooding in areas of northern Macomb County. This is in the Carriageway community in Chesterfield. Well, and take a look at this. Streets are underwater in this neighborhood after the heavy rain. This is the Brycewood subdivision in Chesterfield Township. That's in the area of Cotton and Timothy near I-94. It's a lot going on. Thankfully, we're getting a break from the rain right now, but we may not be done just yet. Yeah, let's get right to Weather Authority. Rich Luderman for the latest. Rich. Uh, Terry Roop, since this morning, some parts of the Thumb, some parts of Macomb and St. Clair County is picking up better than two and a half inches of rain with these persistent in thunderstorms you can see around uh, Brighton and Howell and Ann Arbor not a drop of rain fell today so it was all confined to the east side let's show you what's on sky tracker right now still some heavy storms over the south end of Lake Huron now east of Lake St. Clair over parts of Ontario back to our west it's all dry around Pontiac and Flint and Lansing we may see more storms firing late tonight and especially uh, tomorrow evening flood advisory has just been dropped for parts of Oakland Wayne and Macomb counties that's a good thing but the heat is on the way for tomorrow a lot of us are going to be feeling it with highs in the 90s some of those heat index values tomorrow could be close to 105 how about the numbers right now 79 for us 91 lansing look at south haven lake michigan 93 degrees we're going to get down to 71 it's going to be muggy for the rest of tonight with that thunder shower chance and then right there what's coming next a hot muggy day tomorrow with more evening storms then a much more comfortable pattern for friday saturday and sunday taryn we'll check that numbers coming up in 10. all right we'll check back with you then thanks rich a romulus man has now been charged for that fatal crash that injured the east Eastern Market CEO and killed his wife. Police say 28-year-old Jacob Thomas Moralek drove onto the sidewalk and then struck Dan and Vivian Carmody where they were walking to dinner on Friday afternoon in Detroit. Moralek is charged with operating while intoxicated, causing death, reckless driving causing death, and reckless driving causing serious injury. His bond is set at $250,000. An auto strike looms. The two sides have just three short weeks to make a deal. And so far, there's been little sign of any progress. Tonight, union workers preparing the picket lines and casting votes on whether or not to authorize a strike. Fox News' Charlie Langton joins us live with the and Charlie, you are marching with them. Some of them still behind you now. They have a very strong message for the big three. Oh, that's right. The union, uh, the union, the UAW, they're all fired up today. I right, two big issues going on here today. Number one is a practice strike. See, look at that. They've got their signs today. That's right. Um, I'll talk about that in a minute. The other thing is a vote to allow the leadership to authorize a strike if a contract can't be completed by September 14th. All right, let's go back to that practice strike. We've seen them in the past. Unions practicing, just getting ready. And about 4,400 people work at the Stellantis Detroit Assembly Plant. I would say about 10% or so of them, give or take three or 400 people, came out today for the practice strike. They didn't interrupt work. They just wanted to show leadership that if a strike is needed, they're ready to go. Take a look. Time is running out for the UAW members to authorize its leadership to call for a strike. Thursday is a deadline to authorize the strike before all auto workers contracts expire on September 14th. They want you to accept that it's okay for them to make billions and for the CEOs to make millions and for you to scrape to get by paycheck to paycheck. And that's why union membership here at the Stellantis Assembly Plant on Thursday did a practice strike. What are you thinking about today doing this practice strike? Record profits equals record pay for us. That we deserve it. We work hard. We put in a lot of hours, we miss our families, and we deserve everything we got coming. But the big stickling point is the ending of the tier system, which allows temporary workers to work for years before being offered full-time work. The most important part is ending tiers. It doesn't matter what work someone does. Just because you hired in at this point, it shouldn't take you eight years to get the full pay. Give me a prediction, September 14th, what's going to happen? If the company comes to the table, if they're fair, I think we'll have a tentative agreement that we can vote and ratify on that's fair to make everyone whole. And if not? And if not, then we need to do what we need to do. Strike? We need to do what we need to do. Strike? We need to do what we need to do.
Three strikes in your all. That was three, right? <laughs> Uh, all right, I think that's a strike. All right, you heard it there. All right, so listen, the voters, the, rather the uh, membership of the UAW, they just finished their voting uh, today about 4 o'clock. We're waiting for the results of the strike authorization. Do we have them yet, Mark? Not in yet. Oh, come on, yet. are we going to get them by 6? Hopefully. All right, if you get them in the next 10 seconds, let me know, okay? I was going to try to explain the tier system. It's a little bit difficult, but basically a third of the plant, a third of the UAW auto workers right now are temporary employees. They don't get profit sharing. It takes them years. Some of them never make it to the tier two, which then gets the benefits. And that's really one of the big issues. There are other issues in the contract. Uh, the president, Sean Fain, was here. He said early voting in some other plants, not Michigan, but there were 99% to authorize a strike. I don't think anybody wants a strike, but they will strike if they have to, right? Yes. That's a yes. Okay. Uh, we'll have more at 6 o'clock here. A uh, big practice strike today here at the Stellantis Detroit Assembly Plant. I'm live here in Detroit. I'll send it back to you guys. Yeah, Charlie, three weeks is a long time when it comes to talks, but these two sides have to meet in the middle. Already Ford says they'll have white-collar workers pick up some of the load. Uh, that has a lot of people shaking their heads. I mean, they're going to have to really come to the table and figure this out, and soon. Well, they may have some uh, temporary workers. What do they call people when you work? Are they called scabs if they take your jobs and you're on strike? Yeah, they don't like those people. I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past them to not like that. Listen, is it possible? Of course. Uh, nobody wants a strike here. I've talked to the, the president. Told us he doesn't want a strike either. They want to negotiate, but there just seems to be a difference of opinion. Uh, the company says they, I mean, they've got a lot of issues. They've got profit sharing. That would be a big issue. Electric vehicles, less jobs. That's in the future. So there are some issues going both ways. But today it's for the union people. They want to practice. Strike. They showed a lot of solidarity, solidarity, solidarity here today. So if there's a strike, September 14th, that's the big contract, and they're negotiating right up to that point. But oh yeah, a lot of issues. And at this point in time, we asked the president. They seem to be very, very far apart between the UAW and the the big three. Roop. All right, for the economy and for both sides, of course, everybody hopes that they can come together and maybe meet an agreement sometime soon. We'll be watching this closely. Charlie Langton for us live tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Now to this story on the international front. The leader of a Russian mercenary group is presumed dead after a plane crash today in Russia. Video showing a passenger plane appearing to fall out of the sky with reports of all 10 people on board killed. Now, Russian state media is reporting that Wagner Group leader Yegnev Prigozhin was on Prigozhin, excuse me, was on board. He was listed as a passenger. Russian President Vladimir Putin had called the mercenary leaders and his forces traitors after they launched a short-lived rebellion in June. More of former President Donald Trump's alleged co-conspirators are turning themselves into authorities. Today, Rudy Giuliani and other Donald Trump allies negotiated bond and surrendered in their Georgia election interference case. The former New York City mayor says he's confident he'll be proven innocent. I'm fighting for justice. I have been from the first moment. I represented Donald Trump, an innocent man who has now been proven innocent several times. Former President Donald Trump will surrender in Georgia on Thursday. Fulton County authorities say security will be tight. The sheriff's office claims the building will be on a hard lockdown and some public transportation will be rerouted when Trump arrives. Well, former President Trump won't be appearing on stage at tonight's first Republican primary presidential debate. Will his absence allow other voters to shine? Fox's Garrett Tenney has a preview from Milwaukee. I'm more concerned about character than sound bites. Some of the Republican presidential candidates getting ready to court voters at Milwaukee's Pfizer Forum tonight. Candidates will be lined up in order of recent polls with Florida Governor Ron DeSantis near center stage. It's a key position as he aims to reignite a campaign that's been lagging in recent months. I think it's a big moment for every single person on that stage. People can rise from the bottom to the top. All will be fielding questions on issues like the economy, abortion, crime, and foreign policy. Issues voters hope candidates deliver clear plans on. We need to hear what they're going to do to help alleviate the strain on the middle class. Looming over them all, however, the man not in the room, former President Donald Trump. He's skipping tonight's main event, saying he has enough of a lead that debating isn't necessary. His campaign senior advisor, Chris Lasavita, released a statement saying Trump has already won the debate because he'll be the main topic of conversation, adding, quote, tonight's Republican undercard event really shouldn't even be called a debate, but rather an audition to be a part of President Trump's team 
team in his second term. Some undecided voters don't see it that way. It's pretty disappointing um, just because somebody has voted for you in the past doesn't mean you've earned their vote in the future. The battleground state of Wisconsin will be a big deal to Republicans next year as well when it hosts the Republican National Convention. In Milwaukee, I'm Garrett Tenney, Fox News.